I saw some graffiti recently about saying something about freedom of the press, and I think the only reason that the freedom of the press statement is ever relevant, even in the minds of journalists who appeal to it, is when they think that the reports they've got to produce are so uh, just so easily justified to be something that society needs to be informed of. But if a report is truly false, then they've uh, essentially abused this freedom of the press. Because I kind of, I understand journalism and I studied in school and a lot of my writings are about the sort, sorts of offensiveness, offenses that I see religious people as being, as not only perpetrating, but perpetrating and then being ignorant of. Uh, while saying that their religion is the only way to be a moral person. So, I understand statements like freedom of the press, but I understand also that a journalist would only truly uh, think that statement is, is decent if they fall back on, oh, but we have the right to report. Because these sorts of, these journalists will go home as, as people and they'll, you know, they'll get undressed each night. Um, so anyway, you know. If a report is, tr if a press report is truly false, then all they've done really is just cross a person against basic rights that even imply to all the uh, apply to all the staff that did the crossing. So, if I were a journalist, I wouldn't re work for a, a corporation owned by a religious, um, uh, like a religious CEO. So these Freemasons haven't yet confronted that their religion is based on the existence of a character that doesn't exist at all. So they're trying to say things like art, uh, oh, artists are criminals or artists are criminals and have no comprehension of it yet. Um, they can't make cases like that unless they search through content, select some sort of content and then say this content is morally prescriptive in the artist's mind. And they can't do that. Um, but they, they'll try, and they'll try and pull scams, and, and essentially they haven't... Uh, can you imagine trying to be a profiler who is also a Freemason? Um, your religion tells you that a devil is talking to you at certain times, is in some sort of relationship with you. Um, you know, you're... Uh, so because of that, you'll make what I would call existential errors in judgment, where um, because you weren't able to work your way through what it's like to understand that a religion is false. You'll make incorrect, um, incorrect judgments concerning others. So the proof is there, like they try to say art uh, is morally prescriptive. All art, no matter what the art is about or explores, is morally prescriptive. So they imagine Lucifer giving commandments to them, but because Lucifer really isn't there, they'll try and say things like, oh, it's the video. The video is subliminally programming you. Um, you know, things like that. Anything they can say to try and establish conversational binds that will um, result in me being hospitalized rather than going to court. And that's Gary Kanz and Roger Tall. Um, I do think that calling the religious as a as a collective group the religious right could be risky because they think things like a deity is talking to them and even talking through other people. So they might suppose that if I as a, if I call them the religious right, then the word right sounds like morally right. Um, or idealistically right, which means they'll equate it with, your, oh, even you are saying we're correct. And that's the, the sort of things that they do. Um, so I think they should be called the... You, uh, it should be therefore said, call them the religious wrong. <laughs> um, we know it means right-wing uh, as a demographical statement. Um, Yeah, I like the documentary, Religious.
by Bill Ma. Uh, it opens um, criticisms against all three monotheism, Abrahamic faiths. So these two owners of capital chemists generally genuinely get excited by the um, process of of falsely falsely jotting down conflicts because um, they know if they were to talk to me directly in person about why they think their Freemason religion is even true is true or true true at all uh, they would lose the debate so they go oh well you might have me there in a discussion so I'll move on to um. You know, saying you have this, this, and this conflict, this, this, and this, this, and this, this conflict. And that's made you too sick that you could not appear in the magistrate's court. Uh, that, that's their religion at play, too. Religious epistemology is constantly about um, what you believe in. So if you look up belief in the dictionary, it talks about trust. And uh, so they're asking after, you know, whom you've uh, established a, a trust a gr arrangement with, um, w what people you trust, and it's, it's 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 not just predatory. I genuinely think if they overturned or pr tried to profile their own religion, even they'd have to admit it was a false religion too, and then they'd go, and then then they might lose motivation to uh, be predatorial towards citizens here who defend the rights charter. And because they're a private sector company, even if you keep saying that you defend the rights charter, uh, in my case, I defend the rights charter, but I scrutinize the religious paragraph that section because I think it can be used to excuse any sort of indecency because the person could just say I was obeying my religion. The woman who drowned her kids in the bathtub was uh, essentially pleading that in court. She was saying, God told me, I heard the voice of God saying, drown the kids in a bathtub. So those stories about Abraham sacrificing his son Isaac or God sacrificing Jesus, uh, she believed in them and then drowned her children in a bathtub. And so it's fucking disgraceful. And uh, justice organizations need to start, I think, comprehending that it is fucking disgraceful. Instead of going, because we want honors from Queen Elizabeth, we'll... we'll Start saying light bulbs and um, pencil erasers are causing psychoses and paranoia and schizophrenia. You know, it's idiotic. It's idiotic for the things that Christianity directly causes to not be um, called out. And I've, and I've abstained from any sort of religious belief since age 15, 15, 16, when I left uh, church. I think what also has been absconded is, um, that's, that's a new word I learned, absconded, is this prospect that um, if legal cases start being made against religious uh, so-called instructions in the Bible or other holy books, it'll mean that the, whatever prominent people in history, um, or if they're alive now, that uh, use uh, you know the positions of authority to state their endorsement of this or that religion might be called on um, indecency and you know as there are media reports saying that Queen Elizabeth's gone a bit nutty or is sick um, I don't know how much truth there is to that but I've thought I've thought for some time about her her question, she said, to what greater source of inspiration? So it is, uh, it is li literally a question. But because she's also the leader of the, of the church, it's a, it's a question that she's asked, I guess, while, while having all this support rally for her uh, from Christian um, activists. So if you were to suppose for the sake of example that I was I was um, playing the Batman movie from 1989, I think it was, uh, and the scene where the Joker and some goons storm a museum and, and start painting, um, splatter painting on um, sculptures and, and, and paintings on, on walls. Uh, and if, even if I was like massively cheering in front of the television to that scene, um, 
uh, at the st- correlating to it the same time that Gary and Roger were initiating a surveillance um, uh, a moment of surveillance, then the two of them would conclude to themselves, oh, he believes in the Joker. Uh, I wonder how long until he's triggered to go and s- storm a museum. Uh, all of this is because, yeah, the, their ability to, to formulate questions, they, um, they don't understand things like uh, wh- why, why do you, how do you know the difference between legitimate and stupid questions? Um, because they haven't truly turned to the Freemason um, pioneers or founders and, and asked them, um, why is a now religion a, a load of uh, pretentious bullshit? And so what they should have done was decide if they, if they wanted to be in that religion, then they should not have had anything, any connection to any sort of profiling interests at all. Um, they'll stipulate f- the false conflict, no, that's known as framing the issue. And, um, yeah, I, I genuinely wouldn't. I was, I'm reluctant about... Even even um, with all the philosophy I've read, um, I would be reluctant about thinking I could I could be a profile, even though you know I've talked about why their religion is um, problematic. The golden rule. The golden rule means you can be around someone without. You know, if, if a slaveholder said, uh, "I feed my slaves every day, every night at seven p.m." Then he would say to a third party things like, um, say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So I feed my slave at 7 p.m. Just like, uh, just like how I have dinner. It's, just, it's the same thing. Um, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So, you know, um, that golden rule means that individuals aren't, are not asked to uh, say anything about them as, as an individual person while the person who believes in the golden rule falsely assumes that you're like them because you stood silent while they babbled on about their religion. Um, And that's not disrespectful to Jesus either because I don't have any convincing proof that Jesus ever spoke that rule. And I know that the accounts of his resurrection are traced back to paganism um, and other sources as well. So I can relate to Jesus as as the one of the most misrepresented men in all of history, um, but I obviously don't believe in things like, you know, if you believed in miracles, you would be forced to conclude that David Copperfield's acts were um, because he had supernatural powers from a god, and I obviously don't do that. So, anyway. Yeah. So yeah, these Freem- two Freemasons do genuinely have a problem with the literal, lateral, uh, true co- definition of the word art. Um, and that's, yeah, again, because they have, I suppose they, they, don't, they don't know the words to use to explain why their Freemason religion is, is fake. So that's what they'll say in the end. They'll go, um, oh, did we not comprehend that the Lucifer doesn't even exist? Oh, that must be why we thought art was dangerous and, and causing other people to um, disrespect and mistreat others. Oh, um, and yeah, then they'll realize they shouldn't have uh, even thought, have, have had the audacity to think they could profile um, anything or anyone while they believed in, in all this fake pretentious shit. Um, once again, I'm not criticizing moral teachings i'm just saying we no one who read the little red hen um that i know of didn't comprehend the morals from it uh, at the price of insisting that uh now we have to say that we have a little red hen in our house running around um excuse me i have to feed the hen i'll be back in a little while gavin haburn was in the start of my adulthood a decent friend because i knew him while growing up there was, um, I knew there was a potential for me to be misrepresented um, while going, well, you were around once when I was 
you know, dealing with a lot of difficulty. So because you were nice to me during those years, uh, I'm inclined to place a certain amount of trust in you. But um, uh, I've, I've, I've even, I think I've possibly even scientifically proved this. If, if any kind of exchange starts with a, th a third party or any person uh, telling you that that what telling you they've violated your the privacy act in relation to you, then it just festers in their head. Um, they'll start thinking if you if you even if you're nice, it's a no-win scenario. If you if you you have to say fuck you just for violating my privacy. Otherwise, if you're nice to them and and um, let it slide, they will say um, they'll start to think well. I think you've done something worse to somebody else. Um, and this should be applied, uh, um, since I know that this capital chemist group doesn't even think of that either. Um, I now know what they mean by they're in the private sector. Is It means they're saying that they don't answer to the federal uh, government's Human Rights Act while thinking at the same time that they can invest in the stipulation of, of mental health, mental conflicts, um, which only leads to the dispensing and forceful injecting administration of antipsychotic prescriptions, which uh, get, you know, uh, $1,000 health insurance commission rebates. So it's, it's genuinely not, not getting, having an issue exist pertaining to you but not even getting to find out if the issue is relevant to you because no one is uh, no one is directly approaching you and saying what the issue is about. Um, and yeah, that, that that's um, it's another sign that the the perpetrator or the, the instigators of the of the dilemma um, are religious because the, they are the ones believing and investing their trust in, in claims that have no proof, uh, like the existence of Lucifer, for example. I even, know that, I even know that because I don't accept the existence of Lucifer, they're inclined to then therefore figure that I'm Christian and in favour of... Um, Jesus Christ as a savior and the and the Christian biblical God, because uh, but I know that to be a false dichotomy. The question, do you believe in in the devil or or God? I don't I don't believe in either. Uh, I like um, I like the statement for, forgiven in heaven. Oh, sorry, not forgiven in heaven. Uh, forbidden in heaven and useless in hell. Um, so you know, and if that doesn't allude allude to, no, I don't no, I don't believe any exists because I uh, learned about Galileo. Um, the Catholic Church were were nicer to Adolf Hitler than they were to Galileo. They only they only said sorry for calling him a heretic in nineteen ninety two. So they were going oh, okay. So Earth does. Move spin around the sun. Oh, then God didn't put it at the center. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, if anybody tells you they violated your um, pri the Privacy Act, then you have no idea to what extent have they violated your privacy. And if you trust in them, they're inclined to think you've done something worse than violate another person's privacy. Um, so it always comes back to, well, why did you instigate that first offence? Because it's only it's only uh, resulted in you thinking I would if I would I would commit a worse an even worse some sort of offence that's worse than the violation of another person's privacy. Um, the fact that they they thought they could fall back after after my best grades in high school and college were pretty much in art um you know they they're trying to say video has fucked my head if uh then are they going to say that to those teachers 
in, in high school and college that I didn't qualify those courses and, and um, I didn't complete the assignments or, um, you know, you, you uh, actually art is where you um, get to find out who has true integrity because you learn over time that they couldn't do the things that they are doing through art unless they, they did have um, absolute genuine integrity. Um, so, you know, Jim Carrey is a good example. Um, he, he plays a lot of characters that have absolutely nothing to do with him off set. Um, and I've heard him speak to some extent in interviews about philosophies he's into. Uh, and, I, and I'm very, I'm very much into philosophy. Um, it reminds me that we can often be taught that certain propositions are true of every, and they want us to think they're true of every human everywhere, um, but they ultimately just reduce to something arbitrary that a person's made up. Now you can try to say, well, does that apply to our rights charter too? And it sort of, in a way, it does, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't. See, if a person punches you, for instance. They've, they've worked against your right to move, but they have taken, by taking more advantage of their right to move. So they, it's the person who punched you that obviously does not just believe in the right to move. They believe in the right to move while, while punching you and infringing your right to move. So that's why I think these sorts of rights came together in the first place is because maybe offenses were defined to some extent by how, um, uh, these basic rights are, act, are needed for any sort of action, even an offensive action too. So um, they're trying to find what statements apply to absolutely all of us and are needed for our survival and flourishing and, and are axiomatic. Now, you, uh, now, in that case, I would therefore stress that you cannot say that conversion to a religious idealistic group um, is a basic survival right. That's absolutely bullshit. Um, yeah. Basically, in, in addressing this video issue, the Penn and Teller's bullshit episode with the stained glass cross, it had a pictorial symbolic uh, significance to me of when at corporate level men like Roger and Gary choose to take a hit out on someone so I saw it more or less as a crosshair and the up and down arrows um, representing the up and down quarks in subatomic particles um, so it was all about their hits the picture um, once I realized that they're trying to frame frame the issue and frame conflicts in, for other people uh, by through religious epistemology then that made me realize all the people they're putting in psych wards they're doing so on the basis of religious discrimination so um, I don't think that's I don't think that's right at all uh, and they just they must therefore just be hoping that the person uh, you know, the, whoever that they whoever they take will be um, will just be unaware that that's that's why they were unless they know that there would be a pending case uh, involving them that that they were they're ready to go to the magistrate's court for. Um, then it's religious it's religious people going well. We think we saw you playing Mario Brothers last week, so. We think you're going to jump on someone's head soon because you seem to enjoy playing Mario Brothers. So we think you'll jump on someone. So that would be an offense. So just to prevent this crime, we're going to make you a mental patient for the rest of your life. And this, and it's not a, it's not a pharmacy scam. Because there are better pharmacies in Canberra than the Capital Chemist franchise. Uh, any other franchise than the Capital Chemist franchise. That's a pharmacy. Uh, 
um, so yeah, the fallacy for their uh, in on their behalf is if they see you like laughing or smiling or enjoying a fictional act in a movie, they will preclude that you believe in it because. Even in that scenario, what you've done by smiling or like clapping or applauding a fictitious act, it's more real than their religion. So they want to pray, they want to be predatory to it, towards it, and go, well, this is what you believe in. So if you see someone play a, a villain, they won't comprehend you. They'll comprehend you as a, having a monkey see, monkey do. Uh, I'm thinking about this villain, therefore now I am a villain sort of thing, uh, therefore I would be against the Rights Act. They think that way because they're both Freemasons and they both they own a business in the private sector. When what you could be, what, what, what you were probably doing was thinking that the actor that played the villain has played the villain quite well. And the better that an actor plays a villain is by how convincing they make the villain seem. So um, it's really silly because I wouldn't say I'm a I'm a um, I'm, I'm an adversary to the Masonic religion. I'm potentially an adversary to any form of religion because I've studied why they're never true, and because they're never really true, I don't know why that they are on the rights act as um, something as if to imply that they're needed for our survival, because they're not. I would think of it as the the best first gesture toward the Aboriginal people whose Dreamtime philosophy already has uh, closer, li closer association to aspects of evolutionary theory than anything that Christianity has sought out to prove, starting with the Garden of Incest. So I, the best way to say sorry to the Aborigines for stealing their continent would be for us to... I bet the people that stole it from them were, were Christian-minded. Uh, and, you know... The, bl the black skin reminded them of, of you know, going to hell, so... Uh, who, who, knows what, who knows how they thought. The best way to say to the Aborigines, we're sorry for stealing your continent, is to uh, break away from religious involvement. I think today we're <clears throat> gonna study how to serve uh, the customer. Looking at basic right, human rights, <clears throat> it seems that our Human Rights Act in Australia, we have right to um, movement, uh, right to life, right to health, and right to expression. And so, um, throwing a, I think, I think right to religion, a lot of people will read that thinking, you won't be right unless you're into a given religion. And if they're reading it that way, then a lot of these people might even potentially spend a lot of their lifetime thinking, oh, everything's God or the devil, the devil or God, it's like the yin-yang, the sun or the moon, uh, you know, and they won't even realize that questions like, do you believe in God or the devil, uh, what is, uh, can be called a false dichotomy and stupid, uh, a, a wrong, uh, a bad question or a stupid question, because they, they, they won't be right unless they're religious. Um, yeah, the second myth is about you, you don't have moral awareness or the ability to be introduced to a nightmare, a puzzling nightmare uh, along which you will gather whole, a whole lot of moral awareness and then, you know, take the crucifixion wafer and uh, red wine at the Sunday at church and, and then you'll be moral after you say some prayers. Uh, to say that that's all necessary or else you won't be a moral person is, um, or that's the only way to become moral is misleading. Most of the people saying this were themselves children and that read like stories like The Little Red Hen. And, you know, we were able to, before ever joining a church, we could read that story as young kids and know that it was about teamwork. Not We weren't making claims like um, 
unless you sorry uh, you can't work in a team uh, convincingly unless you go home to a house that where you own a pet hen that's red one thing i've learned about um hospital environments in canberra uh will probably leave me frightened for many years about the sorts of ethics that health of officers are um willing to think are sensible and one is that whether you are christian or not if you were taken into the calvary hospital and there are irrelevant and there's irrelevant talk about you being thought in another person's mind and without law enforcement or a legal to say a lawyer to a legal officer to represent the person going getting taken in going into the hospital um the health officer there may have guards randomly pin someone to the floor on the rumor of a hearsay based rumor that they will harm themselves or someone else without unawares uh, and yet they're wearing, they're bearing a logo saying, give thanks to uh, Calvary. He gave his life that, at that sacred moment of Calvary. It's like, no, he was uh, executed and probably didn't deserve to die. Don't give thanks. Fuck off. I got 2 minutes 37 and 21 points. Whatever, Luke. And What's going on here? Um, I'm trying to remember who it was. There's, I got this email about this scenario. It was rejected from a submission for a Star Trek or Star Wars episode, and it was in the future. And there was a mental dis, a dis I can't remember which. It, it wasn't characterized by, but one element to it was that the people suffering it would think that satellites had contacted them somehow or interacted with their minds. But that could be a, that could have been. Then they could then they'd go and talk to someone else about it, and they could be above ground, on on the ground, uh, above ground, which is, is what non-terrestrial, geostationary. But the, uh, given quantum fields, then there will be. Uh, it doesn't really matter so much where the way that quantum fields work, with the Doppler effect. So Gary Kanza and Roger told that these. 16th century church freemason martyrs of christians seem to think they're getting it wrong when a person's even a christian um, they're even all you would have to do is have depeche mode singing personal jesus and they would figure you thought jesus christ was your personal lord and savior especially if you know anybody with with long hair uh, or semi-long hair so he will then move to wonder if you think you've really been in locations if you're a target that correspond to scenes where Jesus is, Christ is said to have performed supernatural miracles in the three uh, forged Gospels, St. Matthew, St. Luke, and St. John. He doesn't see him, they don't see themselves as criminal, but uh, they just think they've got a smarter religion and that it's as relevant as it was in the 16th century. Uh-oh. -uh. Yeah, so if, the, if, if basic rights include the right to um, expression, the right to move, the right to life, the right to health, um, life, health, expression, movement, yeah, there's those four. Uh, and then there's things like right to religion, then um, it shouldn't be in the same, ca uh, it should be separated categorically immediately. So that other people do not think that uh, it's a basic right to life to be involved in some sort of religious club, uh, because most of the 
most most infringements of rights that I've observed when they are they're always almost always motivated by someone with beliefs um, wait a second. my thoughts when I sat down and started to type um, uh, and I'm, I, I, there was some time spent re-engaging on forums online and then uh, I worked on a, a book draft which were retweaked I don't know how many times um, and it was going to be my first book I didn't want to say I'm just I wanted to write an atheist book because some of them are really shit um, I've read a lot of shit ones I've read a lot of ones that assume one categorical uh, definition of a kind of atheism uh, atheology branch and, and exclude any mention of another one or any other one and uh, or who equate it with a religious right of its own uh, so atheists don't really the to say does do atheists get together and believe in one another is uh, so it's fucking annoying we're not, like we're going to go and start talking like that after what we've had to put up with in real churches to this point. Um, where is the tax exempt status for also for the, the religion, atheism, and um, you know what does it mean if you read quotes like oh, if athe atheism is a religion, like off is a um, TV channel or abstinence is a sex position and. I don't think, yeah, religious people think of it that way because they think they had a choice between a god or a devil, but it was always a choice as to who to believe in that doesn't exist. It wasn't a... Um, you know, it wasn't... Yeah, none of them have heard of false dichotomies. It's like if you were... It's like if a computer... When you first load Microsoft Paint and, they, and it has a 16-bit uh, paint palette for the... And, and, and you were taught that's that's all the colors that there are, or something, before 32-bit color systems were developed, or whatever. Um, people can frame wrong, incorrect questions, they can make incorrect statements. And most people get called on incorrect statements and confronted um, by them, but they don't. They tend to just be, uh, you know, they'll pay lip service to really bad questions, especially if they can market, if, if, especially if, it, if it, <laughs> they, they, they gain more from it. That doesn't, that doesn't mean I haven't asked other people honest questions, but I've gotten tired of a lot of people. Basically, I understand the sorts of things now that re uh, religious thinkers will, will. I also see why some of the. Uh, if, if they're going to pick a, any of the art that I've that I own or have, or have uh, that I consider very important to me in a symbolic way or direct empirical way, or whatever te whatever the respect may be. And there isn't any when a religious person is trying to uh, pick on something like doppelhose and think that they can be um, the religious psychiatric criminal psychology profiling squad uh, against Manson's band in the start of last decade. And so they'll say oh, things like, oh, but he's saying, he's saying. And by that, they, and then they mean, if, well, if you say that, then people will go and think they can proceed with those sorts of types of judgments. And that's because they still think that. Uh, Jesus Christ gospels that were plagiarized, uh, um, you know, from uh, God talking through the pages now, through the spirit of the, uh, and so that so everything was a, not a, the whole piece wasn't to to be for you to think of encounter new questions. It was um, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> it was it was you getting subliminally programmed. I think. Uh, Maybe there are certain truths that maybe there could be a science of types of words or types like you could break sentences down or paragraphs down more into and like so the, the only reason that subliminal suggestion I've read books talking about um <coughs> ads <coughs> cinemas having 
hot dogs uh, in single celled frames in, in the in the in the film and then too many people were getting up and going to the candy bar and buying food and not knowing why they were doing it so they banned subliminal anything but i still remember watching fight club and noticing some of those little frames where uh, brad pitt's um, appearing for just a split frame and from wanting to design movies and clips and loving multimedia all my life i don't think i could ever be hypnotized i don't think i could experience a subliminal subliminal programming uh, but I think, um, and nor could I judge another person to be impaired by it, for instance, unless I was religious and an art re- art tard. And uh, Roger Tall is sadly both, and as is, is Gary Cairns. <clears throat> well, um, he's an art tard because, um, you know, he genuinely knows that I didn't go to his How to Host a Murder Staff conference because, um, is enough reason for him not to give me a death threat in the first place. One reason is not. One thing that I will say about Doppelhurst is that, and it's only going to ultimately come back as to do with my interpretation of it, is about what it symbolizes and stands for. And it, that is more than, obviously that, that's to, to do with the year of that album um, and that era. But, um, it, and I'm not going to even, I would trivialize why it was symbolically important to me at that point in time in my life um, by any document that anyone will turn up uh, on my computer now or ask anyone or talk about to anyone. And um, so, you know, but <clears throat> yeah, if, you've, if, if right-wing religious press have, have offended you or re- religious media, have, uh, media networks have offended you, then you might get why. The Christian right can think that they've um, got everything figured out, you know. If um, if if they are all agreed on this without without dispute, that that the only way that uh, a solution could be found to a a, a species a species wide a race wide state of sin original sinfulness caused by a woman a woman uh, eating an apple. Um, required a murder be done on a, on a long-haired, poetic, nice dude, then, um, and that that's not the strangest religion ever, and that that's always more offensive than art will ever be. It's not, it's not the, um, morals and ethics are, are, are very important, and there's very important morals just in the little red hen, without believing, uh, that r- people that, kids that read that little red hen do not go on saying, you will not, you'll never be able to work in a team or a group or cooperate with anyone unless you own a red hen that talks in your house and you and you pray to it, uh, and you and you have a relationship with it. So, you do not need morals. You do not need imaginary figures to um, learn morals now. And and the older that you get, the more uh, I think that they just. Yeah, well, we all know that no one needed the little red hen as uh, a kid, even when they were kids, and no one makes an issue of it now. But yet a lot of adults will still continue to say that their belief in God and religion is why they count themselves as moral citizens. Did they say moral human citizens? But if there's a religious serial killer on the uh, TV, you know, um, then, then, yeah, then it's right to say that person just isn't human. But it's but it still makes more sense to people to say this music clip is explicit, but God made you in His image from incest in a garden, and that's not explicit. That's just holy. <clears throat> so what category of um They could say they could say something like, uh, "Everyone has the right to to uh, join or form a group, a group scaled trust or something like that." Because it doesn't then it doesn't matter if they're in a bowling club or they're religious or they're in um, a church or something. Uh, that's one that's one solution. But no, I just don't think it, if if it's the religious re- religious nutters 
that always want to think they are always doing the right thing. They always know better, and they always are the ones that can be the most easy, easily excused if they do infringe another against another person's right to expression, life, health, um, or movement. Uh, because they believe in whole in whole whole minds that don't even exist on the basis of their non-existence as best as they were able to detect with their mind that does exist uh, and they believe in them anyway okay that was, that was too long so let's all agree then that since religious people even think uh, even agree that when they get to express their sacred right, the first thing they try to do with it is teach everyone they're not human. God made you uh, as part of this planet, starting with one, just one man, and then the first woman, she got all her woman's rights uh, and no tampons, and she was created from his rib, and she was created for when he felt lonely. So, um, hang on. And because you think that story is so sacred, you like uh, crucifixions, and then you celebrate how much how thankful you are for crucifixions, even though you can't tell the suicide apart from the self-sacrifice part, without saying, "Oh, then he must have floated into the sky." So you can't tell that apart, or well, the believers can't. And um, if you're not a believer, you don't have to celebrate any sort of incest story. In fact, they even they even like to keep that incest part so sacred to themselves that they'll say, no, the original sin was eating an apple. It wasn't the inbreeding. They had to do that at the time. It's like a Game of Thrones, but cheesier with on a lower budget. Uh, you know, the tower. Who were the two that were in the same kingdom, but the brother... Uh, So if you think Jesus died to preserve this, this, the sacredity of that Origins account, uh, anyway, I'd be looking for any distraction from it if I were a Christian. The other thing is this, uh, so Christians are the sort of people who, by the time they reach their 30s and they've taken communion every Sunday, oh, give thanks for the body, give thanks for the blood, they'll get to their 30s and their hair will start to fall out amongst the males more often in a in a circular way it can be a so that a circle is left and other hair falls off and they get like a ring of hair remaining proportionate incidentally coincidentally to the shape of the crown of thorns on Jesus' head whose body they were eating when they eat, eat crucifixions every sunday but when they start losing their hair they'll call their local christian hair hair doctor and say oh doctor why have i been going bald and he'll go i bet it's workplace stress <coughs> So you are known as the religious wrong. It's not really your fault at this point, but you can burn a Bible soon. I wish you luck. Um, my findings have been that with those phonetically and tone of voice ambitious, when they're listening to others, they might think that uh, demographic titles like the religious right in the religious people's minds it, it might seem like God is sending them a return signal saying you're all you're all correct as opposed to okay yeah they have the right to become make themselves as religious as they want to be but I don't think it should be classed as a human right and with very good um, with very good reasons <clears throat> pretty much every single religion that is uh, on offer its own teachers will spend quite a considerable amount of time and effort teaching anyone who believes in the religion itself that they're not a, they're more than human uh, it's essentially or at, at essence they're not they're not human you know this is only a temporary existence and uh, like a, um, a a teaser before the afterlife they call it and um, I, I I prefer after death I think they should use that term after life is uh, I think it's bad. It, it puts this life into unnecessary risks. So maybe not. Maybe after death. But yeah, they should also be called the religious wrong. And it also shouldn't be that 
where you where we all agree we all should have the right to life, the right to health, the right to move, and the right to expression. All of those are, are vastly more essential to anybody's survival uh, and flourishing than and and any any choice to be involved in a religious club is secondary. Not only is it secondary, but it's counterproductive logically to everything we ever learned as children from stories like the Little Red Hen. Uh, you could be four years old and learn all about cooperation and teamwork from someone reading the Little Red Hen to you. But that uh, you could learn all those morals and you will not insist on going home to your room every evening and uh, giving thanks to an invisible hen. You know, even when you were that young, uh, the hen actually, if you believe the hen was real, it would have fucked with the story. It was supposed to be about helping you develop a conscience. It wasn't about claiming that hens exist when, that when they don't, and they're little and red and they can talk. So when you start believing in you have to be religious or you don't know morals, you go against books like that. So it should not be a human right at all. Um, and the religious teachers themselves are the first to say, yeah, actually, you're really a soul that lives forever. You're not actually human. So why it should not be... It shouldn't be a human right there. They're religious wrong. Um, and I call the whole demographic the religious wrong. <clears throat> Actually, also, most, most people's openness to think that drugs and substances that people can put in their mouths, whether they're from pharmacies or on the street, will ruin your lives and make your dick shrink and uh, make your balls retract into your ass. But it's been taught and educated by men like Gary Kanz and Roger Tall that will do that sort of thing. And the religious people haven't gotten over how an apple used to cause original sin. So, you know, they got all these weird theories. They haven't worked out that was, oh, oh maybe inbreeding was worse than eating one apple for like a, the, the beginnings of a women's, a women's lib movement. So, you know, tell any religious person if, that believes in the Bible that if, if you put anything in your mouth, it'll ruin uh, your marriage and everything. And they'll, they'll pretty much be open to it. Uh, also, yeah, Roger and Gary are saying that they, they love to say horrible things about the drugs they're not allowed to sell, but um, they won't caution you about known side effects that are potentially bad to drugs that are high profit that they do sell. And the pharmacist code of ethics is supposed to say a pharmacist will always take the health needs of the patient as the first consideration. But yeah, their slogan that they worked out, the thought was brilliant, was um, everybody needs the capital chemist. But they are very proud of the history of white Australia, so I, they should say at least if they want to be real with us, they should say everybody except for the um, overturned Aborigines needs their capital chemist. And then at least we can get the joke, uh, uh, how, how they honestly thought, you know, a slogan like that would be... Uh, oh, it's offensive either way, isn't it? But yeah, I think... Um, these disclaimers we see on music videos and art and, and video games, they all belong at the inside cover of the holy religious holy books you know warning this may contain a story about the garden of inbreeding that is more offensive that story than any uh rock song i've ever heard uh any art piece or any game i've ever played on any computer or gaming console so why is the disclaimer and it's worse it's more it makes me feel sick just thinking of the, the story uh than you know, any side effect from any drug as well. So go and fucking figure. <clears throat> Instagram, fucking Facebook. And whoever else is watching this, this is the 19th of June 19, 19 This is the hand sign. Middle fingers and thumbs.
Uh, some people have been writing and saying that they think this, even opening a discussion about the end of Christianity and religion, um, it's going nowhere and the spon sponsorship for this show has been scarce to none and I'm thinking of quitting, but um, I'll have to, uh, I'll be back. Uh, yeah, because now in modern terms, these two men that made this, these two Freemasons that made this capital chemist group, uh, they sound just like um, any fundamentalist Christian preacher who, who, who wants to say that you'll get tortured in eternity in hell unless you give 10% of your money. Gary Kenz and Roger Toll are exactly the same, and with all the technological advancements they're able to buy now, they are completely conspiratorial against the entire bisexual rights movement. And just look up statistics of uh, declines in bisexual health rights movement members in Canberra. And it, it's because of deliberate efforts from, the two, from, from men like these guys, because... They don't think the rights movement is a legitimate one. Instead, they think that these uh, Freemason church, Freemasonry church teachings from the 16th century is more legitimate, and it and it means more to Australia's future. Uh, that this this pathetic 16th century church that they don't even have the guts to bring a an, an advocate uh, to step forward and debate their beliefs against a Christian and atheist, whoever. Uh, and and therefore in, in in their you know uh, they've made healthcare the new uh, cover story for Cardinal Pell to fuck a fetus or a two year old kid or a, an eight year old kid and then say oh but I do all this charity work you know uh, and and the first the first clues are, the, are their two slogans um, everybody needs their capital chemist and we know what matters. No one who's a committed pharmacist would ever want to put a slogan like that forward to the community here in Canberra. Uh, you've got to be a fucktard to, do, to even attempt to do something like that. Like, you've got to have been raping the marketing officer while she was trying to type the slogan for it to come out the way that it came out. And I, and I can tell you more than I'm going to tell you in these clips because I worked for these cocksuckers for uh, two decades. And so... That destruction will be a great, I think, uh, doorway for future ties between uh, the question of the flourishment of the Federal Human Rights Act and our uh, glorious friendship with the United States of America. Um, we're better than the religious right. We're going to prove ourselves better than the religious right. We're not going to lose our hair in a circular pattern because we think it's wrong. Uh, or we think it was uh, right to be taught that it was wrong to show respect to Jesus getting murdered. Ah, oh, fuck that. Fuck shit ass bitch cunt shoobity doo up skip de bebop Christopher Reeve.